This is the Texas Observer's Review, review by Carl Richter, a journalistic close-up view of the family separation crisis. Also at the end will be Commander Jonathan White's biography, I believe so. Jacob Sar Sarbaroff's new memoir is a thorough account of how such a cruel policy came to be and how it traumatized hundreds of children and their families by Carl Richter. Excuse me, July 7th, 2020. Above children leave a detention center on a bus. After a bitterly contested Supreme Court justice confirmation of midterm election, the release of the Mueller report, president impeachment proceedings, a global pandemic, and a mass uprising for a policy reform. The heart-wrenching human rights crisis that unfolded in the southern U.S. border in the spring and summer of 2018 may seem distant memory to those who did not directly live through it. In Separated, Inside an American Tragedy, NBC News correspondent Jacob Sabarov mines his memories of the forced separation of immigrant children from their families in order to freshen our own documenting one of the most shameful chapters in modern American history. The book tales from the the book takes the form of a reporter's memoir and operates on one level as a chronicle of how 21st century journalism works. Sabarov recounts how this coverage of immigration issues that year gradually came to focus on the Trump administration's policy of family separation, admitting that early in 2018, he was unaware of the issue. Eventually, he would be among the first reporters allowed inside immigrant detention centers in Texas. There, he witnessed firsthand the appalling conditions of crowded bunk rooms. The re his reporting mem international its attention. He was among the first observers to call those enclosures cages. Despite the protests of at least 100, one high-ranking Border Patrol office official and other apologists for the separation policy, he stands by the description. But Sabarov does not hold himself forth as any kind of journalistic hero. He gives full credit to other reporters such as the Houston Chronicle's Lummi Creel and the New York Times Caitlin Dickerson for breaking the family separation story, providing him leads to follow. He admits errors in his reporting and confesses that the horror he felt about the situation led him to offer characterizations that many would consider breaches of journalistic objectivity. The book's personal frame, including Sabarov's imag imaging Imagining being separated from his own young son serves as a reminder that journalists are only human. What started as an exploration of realities of life along both sides of the border became for me a lesson in how 30 years of failed border policy led to the present moment wherein thousands of young children under the guise of deterrence were likely to be permanently traumatized in the pursuit of a political goal. An understanding of how separated I was from the realities of bipartisan American border policy was a lesson I learned belatedly as a journalist and a citizen, Sobaroff writes. In some passages, as when he describes NBC producers' decision-making regarding coverage, Sobaroff's personal recollections add relevant context, but at, the, at other moments, they seem extraneous. Do we need to know that I'm thinking late hundreds of children and their tames. I don't know why that printed off weird. I'm sorry. Sabarov chooses one separated father and son as exemplars of the family separation crisis. Juan and his teen teenage so son, Jose, fled Guatemala, leaving family members behind after they received death threats from a drug cartel. Pay traffickers got them over the border into Arizona, where they were immediately arrested and separated, despite Juan's assertion that they were seeking asylum. Juan was transported to a federal prison in Victorville, California, while Jose ended up in a youth detention center in Harlingen, Texas. Their story serves as a thorough through line in the book, providing faces and names to those seeking asylum 
in the US, people often dehumanized by right wing media and leadership as criminals or invaders. It's an effective way to bring the broader story home when Juan expresses some trepidation about reuniting with Jose, feeling guilt about his role in causing his son's suffering. The conflict of immigrants facing no good choices becomes clear. They too are only human. The kind of history one might expect from a book about the family separation crisis is plentiful here as well. Using a straightforward chronological structure and a raft of discovered official documents, Sabarov continues or reveals what happened behind the scenes in Washington to enact the Trump administration's zero tolerance immigration policy. To his credit, Sabarov does not spare the Clinton and Obama administrations whose Deterrence-based policies planted seeds that flourished by fed by nationalist manure under Trump and Stephen Miller, the president's chief advisor on immigration and one of the country's most influential racist. But the story is not only one of villainy. Unsung heroes emerged too, especially Commander Jonathan White, a veteran federal public health professional who first warned of the damage family separation would cause and later was called upon to clean up its tragic aftermath. White's story, along with those who, of other players who, for example, kept unofficial lists of children separated from their families that when no other record existed, deserve the spotlight. Sabarov shines on them. Interesting as a memoir than as a reminder of the immortality of the government that inter intentionally caused the suffering of young children and toddlers to coerce asylum seekers to abandon their claims. By their measure, the Trump administration succeeded in one respect, the act of separations and the damage it caused to thousands of parents and children, Sabarov writes in an epilogue. But where they failed and will continue to fail was to, squaw was to quash the determination and perseverance and love that those they tortured share. This is the biography of John White. Commander Jonathan White, PhD, L L S D LCSW, CPH, is a career officer in the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps and a Maryland licensed certified social worker clinical he is an emergency manager specializing in the needs of children and vulnerable populations in crisis events. He is currently stationed at the, in the HHS office of the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response at the Director of Recovery in the Office of Emergency Management and Medical Operations. He led the mission to reunify children separated from their parents at the U.S. border at the Federal Health Coordination Official. HHS operation lead for reunification mission. Prior to joining ASPR, he was the deputy director for the children for children's programs in the administration for children and families ACF Office of Refugee Resettlement ORR, where he led the unaccompanied alien children program, which provides care for and services forty thousand to sixty thousand children and youthful youth annually annually who enter the U.S. without parents or legal guardians. He previously served as senior advisor in ACF's immediate office of the assistant secretary responsible for crisis management, public health, and strategic initiatives. Prior to that, he served as deputy director of ACF's office of human services, emergency preparedness, and response. Earlier in his social work career, he was an oncology social worker at the National Institutes of Healthcare Health Clinical Center, working with advanced cancer patients and their families. Previous to his social work career, he was a colleague, college professor and labor union campaign staffer. He was deployed or held national level leadership roles in over 50 domestic disaster, public health, emergency UAS or UAC influx and pro pragmatic crisis events. This is the end of this, of this um, article. Thank you.